Okay, I just want to spend a few minutes introducing you to some of the data sets that we talked about in class today. You're looking at the class web page. We went over some of the uh, materials. If you want to look at those materials, the PowerPoint slides, they'll, they're linked there. We did show some sea level data and I just wanted to spend a little bit more time on that today. If you click on the link in the slide that you find here or uh, in, in this data set down here, uh, you'll actually get this page. This page will come up. And notice that there's a lot of other data available here. So you could see sea level trends in different uh, different areas. But uh, if we go to, to the Grand Isle area in Louisiana, we get this, we can see the sea level variations uh, from oh, about 1947 up until the present day. And we can see that the sea level is increasing almost linearly. It's a little bit of a bobbling up and down. We can see in terms of <clears throat> meters that, um, well, we cover about one meter from here to here. And uh, over this interval from 1947 up to 19 or 2015, we've covered about, you know, the sea level has increased by about 0.6 meters. From month to month, there are significant variations that are on the order of about 15 centimeters in, in many cases. We, we're down here around 0.6, we're up here around uh, <coughs> point, uh, 0.4, or so, so up to 0.2 meters. If you're interested in these sort of things, or you like to do a project or try it out or see what's going on in a different area, you can export your data to a CSV file. And that um, CSV file, when you bring it up, it'll look like this. And this, you know, this would be in Excel. And um, so you'll notice in the file when it comes up that we have the year 1900. So we have for the different months of the year, and then over here we have monthly MSL means mean sea level. If we look down through the data set, you'll see that we don't actually get data until <coughs> 1947. And that uh, data set continues until, uh, uh, until October, which is when I downloaded this. I think I actually downloaded it in, in December. But anyway, um, what we generally like to do with a data set, you know, if we look at what they did here, they're plotting time on this axis versus uh, sea level on this axis. And um, time is continuous. But over here we have year, and then we have month, and then we have monthly sea level. So what we'd like to do, and I'll show you more about this later on, would be to... Um, come in here and insert a column and we'll call that time and in this column here we'll, well let's find out first what one month is so this is 1 divided by 12 that gives us 0 0.08333 and I, I assume that goes on and on and on okay so we know what that is so over here, let's put 1900. Excuse me. And then let's move down here and we'll put uh, 1900.083333. Something like that. Oh, I messed that up. So I'll cut this. Put that in here. Okay. So we have. 1900 and then one month later is 1900.0833. I'm going to select these two numbers here and then just kind of drag them down. Drag them down to the bottom. And you'll see if I stop here at any one particular time that we can see the uh, uh, 
uh, kind of a call out to the right there. It tells us we're at 1967. And, uh, so I'm just going to fill up this entire column all the way down to the end of the data set. So that, so, so now we have time in this column, we have monthly mean sea level in this column, and uh, now we want to make a plot. We want to make uh, a plot something like we have here. We want to see time on this axis and sea level on this axis. And uh, <clears throat> So in Excel, in order to make a plot, you have uh, scatter plot options, and uh, you, you might go ahead and bring up Excel now. We'll talk a little bit more uh, later in class about uh, customizing this uh, click access toolbar. You can go to more commands, and um, <clears throat> uh, under all commands, you can bring over these 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 different options and, and pin them to to what's referred to as the quick access toolbar. So we want to make a plot, but first we have to select two variables. I'll uh, select this column, and then I'll come over here with the control key down and select the monthly mean sea level. Then I'll go up here, and uh, as a scatter plot option, I'll just use straight lines. And so here we get here we get a plot. And we see that we've got. <coughs> Pretty much what we have over here, a little bit, you know, formatted a little bit differently, but basically the same data set. Uh, some of the numbers may have been filtered out. One of the things I like to do is to to pick a layout that uh, has a lot of things already set up. So here we've got axis titles and we've got grid lines, and since we only have one data set, we really don't need a legend. So I'm just going to delete that and. Uh, now there are a few other things that we can do. We can well, first of all, let's just go ahead and label these axes before we forget. This is time, and it's in years. Those are the units. And over here, this is this is in um, this is mean sea level, or we could we could spell it out. And do you remember the units? It's, uh, it was meters. So we've got our axes labeled, but well, we don't really like having the x-axis, the time axis, just kind of dangling up here. So usually if you highlight something, if you click on these numbers over here and then right click, you, you get a format axis. And we can pin the where the horizontal axis crosses the vertical axis uh, at any particular number we'd like. So let's say minus 1. And just see what happens. So, minus one. Okay. Well, our range didn't go to minus one, but we'll put minus one in there. And, okay. So now, now we've got uh, a range that goes from 0.4 to minus one. Uh, let's come over here on the time axis and do the, you know, do something similar. Except let's take this back to the beginning, beginning date here. 1900. So, so we've got 1900. Okay, so we have a plot that looks a little bit like what we see on the NOAA site. Uh, <clears throat> we could put a chart element in here, which would be a chart title, and put that above the chart, and uh, we could just leave that there for default. And the next thing we'd like to do would be to put a trend line in there. We'd like to see <clears throat> what the best fit line looks like. And uh, so I'm just going to right click on that data series. And you'll notice that down here we have add a trend line. So I'm going to add a trend line. I'm going to use the linear option. I want to display the equation. I want to display the R squared value. And you can see I have both, both options over here. So for the trend line, I'd like maybe to have a black trend line, maybe to have bigger dots or bigger, bigger line 
So I go down here and I choose these different things over here just to kind of highlight the uh, trend. And over here, I'm going to increase the font size. And I can also right click on the box and um, format the trend line label. And for the fill, I can you know, select uh, any color fill I'd like. So that kind of blocks out the, uh, the back, background grid lines. We can change the variables, so we have a mean sea level, and we can just call this uh, T for time. And you can see we have an equation here. R squared is a um, coefficient of determination. R is a correlation coefficient. And if you aren't sure what the co correlation coefficient is, you can type in um, equals 0. Point Eight zero four two, and then we'll take that to the one half power. And so we've got about a 0.9 correlation coefficient, a 0.08 uh, coefficient of determination. We could uh, do a bunch of things with the time series. Uh, for now, I just wanted to introduce you to the data set give you an opportunity to see how to bring it up and plot it. And I think on the next uh, video we'll spend a little bit more time showing you how to bring up these different options and uh, maybe do a few other things. Before we go though, and it's always good to do this, would be to save your file. And I'm going to save this as uh, <clears throat> uh, mean sea level grand isle for class so I'll have it there now notice it doesn't like that so I'm going to cancel I'm going to go back and uh, save as and this is important because if you save as a CSV file, then you lose your graphics and um, maybe I'll use an XLS file and come back here and use the, use the same, same name. I'll save this as a for class. Okay. So, pretty, pretty important. If I had saved that as a CSV file,